Today on Pat's Car Garage, how to make a slow car slower with Dynamat Extreme. More on that in a bit, but first, are you tired of having no base in your W202? Do you not want to use stupid subwoofers that eat up your entire trunk space? Well, do I have a good solution for you? Uh, <laughs> okay, so what you can do is, okay, what I have here are um, shallow mount subwoofers by a company called Earthquake Sound. Uh, just to be clear, I'm not at all affiliated with them. I'm just, you know, I don't mind reviewing a good product when I get one. And these subwoofers, boy, let me tell you, they are awesome. They're free air subs, they fire into the trunk. Uh, well, in this configuration, they don't have to, you can, you know, flip them around. But in this configuration, they fire into the trunk. Uh, they're powered by a kicker 300 watt amp. These can handle 200 watts uh, peak and 100 watts continuous. So the amp is overpowered for these speakers, which means that you, you got to be careful how high you turn the gain on the amp. But that's a good thing because that means that you're not going to get uh, distortion when you know the bass is hitting hard. So you know you just got to be careful with the gain. And otherwise, yeah. So what I love about the setup is there is absolutely no trunk space that is lost, obviously, because we're just putting the subs into the locate into the factory location. But the thing is, like. These subs, they hit so hard and they sound so deep that people genuinely think I have like a 10 inch sub in the trunk, but it's not at all the case. So this is one solution that's out there and frankly, I really love it, but it does have one drawback is the thing is the, the, these subs, they are a lot louder than you expect, you know, small little 6.5 inch subs to be. So when they hit anything that's loose on the, uh, parcel shelf well below the parcel shelf rather is gonna rattle so you have to make sure you have all the wiring taped down so here I got some you know harnesses I got the vacuum lines so basically you just need to make sure everything's taped down these are the the speaker connectors so what I have here is the normally like the the subwoofers were, were plugged into this harness so what I did instead is I bought a spl uh, not a splitter but a um, adapter to RCA so that I could run RCA wires to the input on the amp. When you choose your amp, you need to make sure you can buy it, you get an amp that has speaker level inputs, uh, which the kicker does. The next thing you have to do is you need to stick on some CLD tiles. So here I got some Dynamatic Stream, and what CLD tiles do is they're not sound insulation like a lot of people mistake them to be. They are vibration dampers. So, you know, because the hat shelf is fairly flimsy uh, sheet metal, it's not an ideal place to put subs, but I'm hoping that the CLD tiles do help. I already had the setup without the CLD tiles and it was really, really good, so I'm hoping they make it even better. Now, one more thing that I would like to add, I gotta move to the trunk though, is just a little interesting, just a little interesting observation I made is, you know, on most W202s, the, the trunk light is on this part of the trim right here. Um, but I found that there's a second cutout, because I've seen a picture on Google right here in the parcel shelf, and this cutout can fit another one of the trunk lights. So, wait, I'll grab the trunk light. So just the same one that's in the trim, which is, you know, this little guy here, the little festoon bulb holder. It fits, you know, right up here into the trim, and it also fits right in here into this cutout. So what I wanted to do is add a second trunk light since having one trunk light on the side doesn't really illuminate the trunk all that well. I figured, well, look, there's a cutout in the sheet metal. So yeah, just add another one. So I made a little wiring harness here to prepare it. The wiring harness goes up here. It goes on the hat shelf where it's uh, taped down, of course. It comes out through here. And then this little red wire, that's the power supply. I just tap it into the uh, into the harness here somewhere. Solder, uh, solder soldered soldered i don't know soldered into the wiring here and then the ground just pops down and grounds down here so yeah now notes on cld tiles because a lot of people they mistake these cld tiles to be to be sound insulation they're not if you want sound insulation to prevent airborne noise from coming into the cabin you need uh, you need basically a, a decoupled mass-loaded barrier from, you know, whatever you're trying to isolate noise from. 
Um, there's products for that out there, but that's not the focus of this video. CLD tiles. A lot of people will plaster their car in them, but that's that's you're just wasting money if you plaster your entire car with it. So what you have to do instead is you gotta you gotta look for basically sheet metal, right? Any thin sheet metal that you find, you need to cover about 25% of its surface area with CLD tiles to have an effective uh, vibration damping result. So I bought these mainly to do the roof while the headliner was out. But here's the thing, I mean, obviously I bought four sheets, so I had quite a lot spare. And, oh, that's pretty dark. Let's get the light. Light. So yeah, basically up here you got the, you got the roof. So, you know, you got to put about 25% right in the middle where there's no structural point near the sheet metal. Because as soon as you have a structural point, there's no there's no vibration at the structural point because it's effectively a node. You know the sheet metal can't vibrate over there. So you want to put the CLD tiles right in the middle of the sheet metal where there's no structural uh, points. So I'll put one down here and another strip down here and another one over there. So I'm gonna film that in a second. Um, and yeah, if you have a you know all this this car already comes with some CLD tiles. There's some underneath the seats, but they were so old that they cracked and came right off, so I'm gonna replace those two. And then, you know, you'll end up inevitably with small little chunks of sheet of CLD tiles left. So what you can do is just, you know, find whatever freaking, you know, find whatever sheet metal spot you have that may vibrate. You know, just go like knock, 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 knock on stuff if it vibrates. Just, you know, stick on your, your spare pieces on. See, I got like one there, I have one here. I already also have one over there and I'm gonna add another one here. I just took off a little bit of surface rust and repainted it, so that's why there's no CLD tiles on it yet. But yeah, you know, the main point is don't plaster your car with them because there's no point. You're just wasting money if you do that. There you go, that's how you install CLD tiles.